Hello, this is John Sauls. Just want to review how to install the Cognix software and how to kind of configure it. Um, you may have this, uh, this is a free software package that comes from Cognix. Uh, there are several ways to get your hands on the package. You may have uh, uh, co workers that have it, it may be available on a company server, or your IT people may have it. If you don't have it, it's really easy to get. All you have to do is go to the Cognix.com website. It's www.cognix.com. Just come in here to support, click over on the software and firmware, and it's going to come up with the current versions of the software. Right now we've been sticking at 4.9.3. Uh, the newer cameras, uh, a couple of the new cameras require the 5.0 software, and what Cognix has kind of done is they've made a split at the uh, uh, 5.0 software. So the, the newer cameras, the uh, 5705 listed over here. Um, and the 8405 require this new software uh, but the new software doesn't support all of their other cameras so they have a 4.10 point something version that's embedded within this 5.0 software uh, what we found is some of our customers have an issue where they try to uh, load up the software offline in an emulator if they're not careful they'll accidentally upgrade the the software the the program to a newer, newer version of the firmware then when they try to download it to the camera it causes issues uh, so for right now what we've been doing is we've been sticking at Insight Explorer 4.9.3 um, if you scroll down to that here there's a couple versions of that as well uh, what you'll want is probably the installer only that installs just what you need it doesn't install a lot of the extra stuff uh, some of the extra documentation uh, OPC server uh, the software developer kit all of those extra components come in the full package uh, for most applications just doing the installer only is good enough uh, so you just click on the installer only you can come in here and click download you'll want to make sure that it saves it with the .exe after it some of the uh, browsers have some trouble with that and they uh, change the numbers change the the way the program saves so you want to make sure to save it as an exe uh, if it does save differently you can change the program name to exe and then it will figure it out and treat it correctly uh, once you have the software installed you can go ahead and load it up and you may or may not get something that looks like this if you're connected to cameras through your network it will come up with the easy builder view um, if you are not connected to the network uh, you may come up with a screen that only has a couple options I believe file sensor system um, either way you you'll want the first thing you will want to do is kind of set the system up to work better for you uh, the first thing you'll do is you come into the system command come down to options and you'll come up into the program with something that looks like this the first thing that I always do is I go to the job view and I will go ahead and make this uh, system spreadsheet my default view uh, for most of the programs that we do we do use the spreadsheet uh, this will also be checked by default to confirm online offline transitions I usually turn it off because I find it annoying for me just because I'm, I'm going online and offline so often uh, I'm clicking a whole bunch of extra times. You may want to leave that on just to make sure you don't shut down your lines. Um, and you can go ahead and click OK. And you will see that we're still in the, the Easy Builder view. Now, just to quickly review, Easy Builder is a really ease of use type programming environment. Uh, supports most of the Cognix cameras. It's something that Cognix promotes heavily, which is why it comes up as the default program. The problem that we have with it is it generates a whole lot of extra overhead, a whole lot of extra programming, uh, and it kind of ties our hands as far as things that we can do, whereas the spreadsheet we're a little bit more wide open. So for most of our programming, we'll use the spreadsheet. Um, to see the spreadsheet, you can come in here and click View and Spreadsheet. And for example, a normal uh, Insight spreadsheet program will come up with just the image this is what it, it generates extra just for taking the initial picture so that's kind of what easy builder does in the background if I say file new job and yes we want to clear that all the way this is the way an insight program starts for your cameras it's just the image um, the very low overhead very very fast processing so this will now be our default view um, the other thing you'll want to do in here is into the emulation if you uh, 
do not automatically have the system set up or it is not already configured this is where we're going to be doing our offline programming reference our key if you will um, the first thing I would do is I would come in here and change the emulator to be an InSight 7200 the default is standard which is a 640 by 480 camera which will not work with your images you have a higher resolution cameras so the first thing you do is change that to an InSight 7200 then you'll have your offline programming reference. Now I've already gotten my key here so in your system you would not see this turned on but all you have to do to make this work is you come in and select the uh, offline programming reference and hit copy then you can go to the Cognix website again if you go to support oh, support insight support over here on the left side you'll see the insight key generator you can go ahead and click on that and we'll give you some instructions it will talk you through basically the same steps that we've taken they will ask you for your company name there we go and your programming reference so I hit paste and then I can just hit get the key and it will usually come up here with the information if you've typed this number in incorrectly if you got extra spaces at the beginning or end or even a return it, it may reject it but normally if you just do a copy and paste that's the easiest way to get it uh, then in here you can just double click on it it will select it you hit copy and we go back to our system here and you would just paste it in here again I've already got it there so I'm not going to do it again um, and we can say OK when we're done. And it may go ask you if you want to save your program changes. It may ask you to reboot the system. It may do some other things there. Just follow the prompts and go through it. Uh, saving the programs usually isn't required, but you know if you've made some changes, you may want to do that. Now the next thing that we got to do here, you want to log into the cameras. Uh, right now, the view that we're seeing, the spreadsheet that we're seeing, is our emulator. Um, and we want to see the network that's available so we can come in here to view and we'll want to see the network the other thing you can show here from view and depending on, on your system and how you come to it you may see the palette come up here usually it looks pretty much like this um, and you can go ahead and do it this is where you do all of your programming from for the most part, I'm not expecting our customers to be doing a lot of programming. If you were going to do a lot of programming, I would show the palette as well. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. Uh, so normally what you'll see is your network over here. You will see uh, every PC that's running uh, Insight Explorer software will show up. The emulator for each one of those PCs will show up here on the left. You'll also see each one of the cameras that's available there on the left. Now in the event that you're set up to the cameras connected to a camera and you're not seeing the camera itself, you can come in here to the, the programs and click on system, add sensor device to network, and usually it's going to come up here and find that camera that's missing. Now in this case my IP address is incorrect for this camera. I've got a different IP address configured. I may have a name that's really strange, uh, something like ISM 1100-something something something. Uh, some of them include part of the uh, uh, MAC address in the name of the camera. So you'll want to change that camera name to whatever you're, you're hooking up to. Uh, this would be something you'd do for a brand new camera. In my case, I'm going to go ahead and set it up to the IP address of my camera. You can also do copy PC network. Now this is kind of a dangerous thing to do because it's going to enter a lot of information that first of all doesn't matter to your camera like the default gateway, the DNS server, DNS server, DNS server so I want to get rid of all that and then I have to give it a, a unique IP address so I'm gonna say uh, 44 is the name of this one now if you're logging into your cameras normally you don't want to change these things uh, this is something your camera network should already be set up your system should be already configured if you change the IP address on the camera without permission, uh, um, that usually means something bad. You're going to stop other things from talking it. You're going to make the server stop communicating with it, things like that. Uh, the other thing that you may use the same add sensor device to network for, sometimes the cameras won't show up over here and they need kind of a kickstart to get them going. 
you may just run this add sensor device to network and all of a sudden see all of your cameras pop up over here. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what causes that but it's something we've seen quite a bit of. So I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. It's going to change the sensor device settings. I'll say OK. And it says it's successfully changed and now you can see my camera shows up on the list over here. So I'll go ahead and close that out. Uh, so normally you'd be logging into the cameras. You'd just double click on it to, to go into the camera. For right now what we're going to do is I'm going to be running the uh, emulator over here kind of show the way things work. Uh, but really this is the way you would set up your system. The last thing you would want to do is you'd want to come in here and save the layout once you get it to the way you want. The one thing that I've noticed is for some reason if you whether you're uh, setting it up to say to show this um, sensors view or the uh, film strip at the bottom it always remembers it with the film strip. Uh, it doesn't matter if you hide that or, or show it it's always going to show it with the film strip to hide that film strip if you want a little bit more programming room you can just come into view and say film strip you may have to say it twice to get rid of it sometimes you say it once sometimes it's twice so really that's how you set up and configure the programming um, if there are any questions please feel free to let us know